<laughs> yeah, talking about mooks. The summertime is the time for mooks. There's a lot of them. I, I have questions to ask, but I don't know if I should begin in the pre-show. I'm, I'm curious, Luis, have you participated in MOOC kind of courses before English Across Cultures? I am participating in that course, taking it. As a matter of fact, but uh, Robert uh, asked me to to give a talk about my ideas, which are, you know, a different focus from what he was teaching. So we have a hangout on that. Yes, about it. It wasn't. It, it didn't came out too good. But did you Anybody participate in anything like the Change Eleven MOOC or Edu MOOC? Yes, or yes, you did. Yes, I actually, uh, I, I, I was in the MOOC 09, the second MOOC by 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 uh, the Canadians. Mm -hmm. MOOC uh, 209. Stephen uh, Stephen Downs, Dave Cormier, uh, yes. George Stevens, yes. guys. Yeah, actually, I have been kind of inter uh, trying to interact with them, but we have uh, some differences, uh, mostly with us uh, uh, Downs, because I I believe in cultural differences, and and he's against that kind of study. He says that if you uh, want to find a difference, you will find it. Therefore, he will not give me the data. I, 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 what I was asking was <laughs> for the the data of how many people register, how they did, and how was the attrition rate for people from different countries. Of mm. course, there might be British people in 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 Abu Dhabi that will uh, kind of mix the data. But what I wanted to see was whether the Catholic Europeans behaved different from the Protestant Europeans differently from the British speaking people. Actually, the map I will be showing now in the presentation, that, that second slide, I wanted to, to, to uh, um, put together the data from all this, those areas and mm -hmm. see whether there was a consistent difference in mm -hmm. how they, people respond to the MOOCs. Mm -hmm. But they didn't give me the data on the basis that uh, they uh, Downs, mostly Stephen Downs, uh, he's against those uh, cultural studies, looking for differences, mm. because all people mm. must be together. I got very mad at it. I said that uh, uh, he wants to have a woman and, and men being equal, and woman and males have to be different, but what we have to do is to learn how to handle it. But uh, And the same, I think, happens with cultures. Okay? Now I'm wondering if we should invite Stephen to this hangout and make things really exciting. Yeah. Well, invite him. Uh, he's okay. around. I'll invite him right now. And I, actually, uh, I, I show them and I talk about them, but but uh, I will not stop talking about this problem or this difference because I think it's, it's part of research and, and what we have, what we should have done was to get the data of the MOOC 11 and and then discuss whether it was meaningful or not. But um, he just didn't get the data. Yeah, Jeff Lebo invited other people to join the hangout. Yes, and that other person was Stephen Downs. Oh, okay. <laughs> and I'm ha this, for some reason the hangout is not uh, when I try to start broadcasting. It's giving me a failed to post broadcast video. Please try again message. Uh, so I think I'm going to step out one more time and pop back in and see if that changes anything. Uh, and if okay. not, we'll go to a plan B. I will be doing my presentation, but before I do that, uh, we must be sure that people already entered the slide share presentation. Can you see now my 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 Google Doc presentation? Uh, I have to go into the app. Let me see. Uh, I believe it's coming up. Okay. It's trying to do something. Yes, I see it. Uh huh. Okay, okay, and now I will go back to my, uh, because now you cannot see my face, or you can see it at the bottom. 
Uh, yes, you can. And I also have a SlideShare app here. Let's see, uh -huh. SlideShare. You have it. I don't have it. Yeah, you have to oh, go and get it, probably. Okay. The problem, the problem of, with the SlideShare or the or the Google Doc is that they came out too small. Mm -hmm. And again, I, there is a lot of data in that third slide, even mm -hmm. in the fourth. The fourth so slide the is the one I was telling you that that you see here. I, you cannot read the countries there. If you are a loader. Hmm? okay, when you load, I, I have to go slow at that. I have to rem remind myself that they take uh, time to come out. Or uh, let's do something. I will ask you. You will tell me yes. Now we can see it. So I will talk. So I will talk. But are you seeing my fourth slide? That first, let us talk uh, about uh, cultures. I went. I changed over to the. Oops, Google Effects. That's not what I want. Sorry. I want the. No, it, 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 it doesn't the hangouts <laughs> has not resolved yet. Uh, I don't know if you you can change uh, my slides or I can change it or you just follow me. That detail I don't. <sighs> I don't see now the PowerPoint app in my screen. It's like it should be a tab, but it doesn't. Um, I just don't see it. I'm not sure why not. Well, let, let's do something. I will put off my Google Doc presentation, and okay. I will only open it after uh, you have instructed people to 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 open the slide share presentation in a second window. I got it now. Yes, I do too. You got it now? But you we got my see, first we see about your culture? whole doc page as opposed to presentation mode. So like we see all the slides and the file yes. edit view and so on. Yeah, and the see. slide he's on, or maybe if I change, what if I change the slides? Oh yeah, you we get can a different slide? choose what we want to see. No, yeah. the one I want you to see now, I was just talking to Vance, uh, Jeff, yeah. is the one about cultures. It's a map of the world, in, uh, but uh -huh. you see, it's Number so small four. that the countries, yeah. the labels to each country are not easy to, to watch. If you see it in a slide share, you see it wide, and then you can follow very easily where the Catholic uh, European countries, um, for example, where is Ireland there? Ireland is not in the Catholic European countries. Ireland is in the English-speaking countries because the English-speaking countries behave differently in these studies of World Value Survey than other countries. And that's what my point is very uh, much to, okay, countries differ in their cultures. In, in other words, they differ in how they handle technologies, for example, and therefore they are going to handle differently the information and communication technologies. So we are doing MOOCs around the world, thinking that everybody is the same, but in, in truth, what is coming is this slide. Please tell me when the new slide come out. You see, it takes too long for Hangout to get it. Well, I'm me. I'm playing with other things, and other people could be doing that. They they could be going into Google Effects, and and, and somehow yeah. I'm not seeing your controls. I see your Google presentation page, and I can actually play with it. If I want to click on the second slide, I'll see the second slide, mm. but I'm not seeing yeah. you control it. But I, I think for purposes of the recording, I'm going to use the slide share, and as you go from slide to slide. Just I think it's better for everybody. Hangout has not solved this problem, but I need it. I need it uh, this way in order to follow, you know, to, to handle my, my presentation. Right. But people can, will follow it better uh, on the slide share. So I am going to get off Google Doc now. Okay, I am going to, to put it off. And back to reality. And uh, the slide share presentation will do different. If, to follow the instructions once we begin in eight minutes from now. Chat, uh, group chat, yes, but do this thing moves? No. I, it's a new chat, okay. The slide share that I've put up there is advanced learning together, right? That's the one that's in the in the Titan pad. 
That one is different. One, I just put it in the in the chat. You put it in the chat, okay? Because the one that we've got up is different from the, uh, mm. from the one. Yeah, that's one of the problems I have found in life. That uh, when one has his computer. Uh, let's see. You put it in the again. chat. Slide here. Yeah, so that's the one, the events. Yeah, that's that. Oh, yeah, advanced slash learning together. Yes, uh -huh, okay. Uh, uh, eliminate the first one. The first one is missing an S for some reason. Okay, I, I damage it. Advanced. It's the second one. Was it? Well, I mean, if you do click there, things should happen. Yeah, things happen when do you click. That okay, takes learning me together. to the and learning together page. Yeah, and and there is the presentation where you will follow. Uh, mm -hmm. Yes, you could follow it there, uh, but that's the presentation that we've got here in the window. Let me just get its URL. So this oh, is well, but it's big below that. It's two two presentations below. This one, this is this is the one you're thinking of, which is different from the one that's in the. Um, okay, so you, you decide on that. I will be talking from my Google Doc, okay? So uh -huh. you decide uh, uh, what link are you going to put in the hour. Oh, okay, you already put it. Slideshare, Luis Ordon, advanced but learning. That, okay. that slideshow is different from the one that's in the Google mm -hmm. Doc. Let me see, because if it is different, it's the, the first version, which I changed it on. Uh, no, this is the right one. Okay, okay, okay. That's it. So the one that's in the, uh, they both say July the 15th, but the slides are different. Uh, no, 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 they're not. Hang on no. a second. I'm, my apologies. I'm looking no, at they, they, Yes, they're they, the same. The day I talk to Vance, the first day I talk to Vance, I prepare my first presentation. I mm. send it to him just to get his approval. But then, of course, I started to... to think better about it, and I changed two or three slides. I decided for this final version, because I thought Vance was following me with the Google Docs, but no, he was still yeah. the first, the first uh, you know, it's, it's coming out of the lab, but now it's coming out of the production line, which is yeah. much better for public okay. purposes. Yeah, well, I can see the the down slide, and, and also you've got a link to the, to the original yeah. on Flickr, so... Yes. Yeah, and it's about and I the will same size. It. I, I will mention advance because many people in Latin America, for example, don't know about connectivity and connective knowledge. For mm -hmm. you people, MOOCs are just, you know, a long time on the air. But uh, I am teaching here research methods in a doctorate level education uh, research program. Uh, I mean, PhD for in education. I am teaching educational math, uh, research because I am the one who knows these things because I learned it on my own. But our schools, education schools, still have not gotten to connectivism. Mm -hmm. So I, I have to use these opportunities to inform my world that these things are there and for mm -hmm. them to go. The other problem is they are in English and many people don't speak English. You you are in Korea, Jeff? Yes, I am. And, and you are in, in Abu Dhabi, Vance. So we are really in the three three parts of the world now. Yep. I am the one that is enjoying 9.30 in the morning, beautiful Sunday, woodpeckers pecking on my window. <laughs> Speaking of which, I'm going to go ahead and open my window. The, the monsoons have stopped and it's getting stuffy in here. Uh, no. Oh, losing connection with the Titan Pad. Got it back. Okay. Oh, I see you. So, I'll send a couple of tweets or something as long as we're hanging out here.
so we can attract people. Oh, goodness. What was that? Okay. Let's see if I can tweet a few people in. You don't you don't wait. At nine thirty we begin or you wait some time for people to arrive? That's really up to you. Uh, I don't know. I don't, yeah, I don't know. Uh, we can wait. Um, perhaps nobody minutes. comes, so let's <laughs> perhaps he's not interested for other people to spend their Sunday on this. So we just record it and people can see it whenever they want. That's the idea. True, true. Uh -huh. Yeah, that's really well I mean we can start any time in, in a sense we've already started. We we uh, Jeff is recording this, so oh my goodness, I'm having trouble. Oh, <sighs> silly me! I'm having trouble getting into my Twitter account because I've just probably a good idea to let me go ahead and send the tweets. Otherwise, I'm hopelessly multitasking. I I keep seeing two windows for Jeff. Jeff has one for his. For yes, Jeff, Jeff has one black. Actually, Jeff has two computers uh, in here. Oh, okay. Uh, Okay. One is just to kind of take a look at the stream and everything. And actually, now that you're here, I think I can actually leave that thing. You do, you do know computers. I don't know anything about it. I am I'm very... a geek. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I, we all learn from Jeff. This is really, uh, Jeff is generally pioneering. And we're okay. Sort of... yeah. He's the expert. I have yeah. a student in engineering computer, in, in, yeah, engineering computer engineering or whatever. That they are, they, they really know. <laughs> All I do is to drive the car around. I know nothing about the mechanics. Yeah, I only learn what I need to do, what I need to know in order to do what I want to do. Yeah. Uh, well, we are at the top of the hour. Vance, would you like to uh, introduce this Let week's me... learning together? Well, let me send a tweet okay. so I can. Uh, yeah, give me a, give me <laughs> just a moment. It's been it's been a long tweet, man. It's only 140 <laughs> characters. Uh, you you get to, no but, pressure. But, 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 but what can I say? What can I say? Yeah, yeah, that's it. You know, just relax. You, know, <laughs> you might attract somebody. Let me just word this carefully. I mean, because it's 100 and what 30 characters, uh, 40, 140 characters, right? Yes. And you have to be careful on the wording. Okay. And Luis, uh, you know, there is the, in case people do tune in, are you aware of the text chat, the public text chat at, there's a couple places, this is one of them. Uh, you mean to introduce myself? Uh, no, you don't have to do anything, but uh, if people start tuning in, they might be posting comments or questions in the I know, uh, I know. chat there. Yeah. yeah, I have the chat open, yes. Okay. Ready. Okay, no, just give me a second. I'm putting the hashtags in, you know, giving you know, this a little Vance thought. Vance is a tweet artist. You, you can't rush uh, art, I guess. Yeah, yeah, you know. Let's see. Okay. All right. So I guess I've got 30 more characters left. What should I do with those 34 characters? <laughs> Add another hashtag. Um, please join us. How about that? Okay. Um, okay. Oh, perfect. Down to zero. Right at zero. Okay. Okay. Like I'll you send got your this. Money's worth from your tweet. Yeah. Okay. That's cool. So yeah, I just tweeted uh, for people to that were that were streaming live here. Actually, this is kind of like starting the show. I just sent the introduction. I sent the tweet that starts the show. So this is learning together, and uh, uh, I'm I'm learning gradually from Jeff Lebo all the time. So now he's, I've, for the first time, I'm so proud of myself. I've you know just copying and pasting his code that he supplied me through the back channel here. I've, I'm streaming this on the learning together page, and now I think it's so cool that. Um, you know, with with something so concise as um, Google Plus Hangouts that you can put this on the air, get your YouTube embed, and stick that 
with a little bit of uh, decoration that Jeff has put on there with his Titan pad and uh, whatever else he's got going there. What, what else is there? Let's see if I can go. That window is somewhere else. But anyway, here it is. Okay, well, that's it. He's got a Titan pad up there and then the play button on the, on, on the Google Air streaming. So you can stream this presentation from either Jeff's page where he's embedded it, and that's at uh, englishbridges.net slash live, or you can go to learning together and you can see it. And uh, that's a, a neat, neat trick I just learned from Jeff. Of course, I was following Jeff in uh, Webcast Academy, uh, learning how to do this in a really complicated fashion, and now you can just Two set clicks up and off you go. Pad. That's it, you know. What can I say? And and well, one way we learn is by uh, participating in MOOCs, which are massive open online courses. It seems to be the the uh, mode du jour. And um, Luis Ordonez, who's joined us here, has set one up in uh, in a Spanish context, which he calls Camel. And I have to admit, oh, it's a good time to hand over to Luis and. Um, Ask you what does camel mean in Spanish again? Curso abierto masivo en línea. Okay. Curso abierto masivo, abierto, abierto, masivo en línea. Okay, that, that makes a lot of sense actually. So, well, this is July 15th, 2012, and we're going to talk with uh, Luis about his course, and um, hopefully other people will join us as we're in session so we can have an open discussion here. Well, Vance, thank you very much. It's a pleasure and an honor to be with you two people, very famous people. I, I have begun uh, to, to wonder about uh, how to use these technologies for education. And uh, mm, my present idea is to develop a course on how to do collaborative research. Okay, but doing collaborative research is not only learning to handle the tricks and the techniques for collaboration, it's also a cultural approach. We keep talking that this digital world will bring to us a new collaborative culture and all the work of the MIT Media Labs has tried to pinpoint to down the, the idea that the collaborative culture is developing. But what I have found is that Cultures are neither good nor bad. They are just there. And we must learn how to handle cultures in order to be able to mm, transfer technologies in an appropriate way. I think that what I've been doing at the end is research on how to handle MOOCs, which I call CAMEL, Curso Abierto Masivo en Línea, how to handle MOOCs in my part of the world, Latin America. And if you ask Latin Americans, they will say, no, we are all different from each country. It's not the same as somebody from Argentina, that's somebody from Venezuela or from Mexico. But as we will see uh, during this talk, uh, we are much closer among us than in relation to other countries. So when we try to enter MOOCs, or when we try to teach MOOCs the same way that we learn it, for example, in the original MOOCs uh, of the uh, people from Alberta University in Canada, we find out that things don't work the same and we must learn. What I have been doing, I think I can show in the slides I will be presented. I understand Jeff is going to explain how to get to the slide share presentation, which will be better rather than following the hangout. Jeff, can you please explain how to enter that? And sure. For anyone who is listening, uh, go to englishbridges.net slash live and in there you'll see Luis's, pres Luis's presentation and you'll see a link to a slide share and so you can go there and watch the slide share and click through the slides as Luis is uh, describing them. Thank you. Uh, well I will assume that you people are right now going to the slide share presentation but I will have it here in the in the hangouts in order to follow it. Please tell me when you are watching my Google Doc presentation in the hangout for me to begin. I think we are good to go. You see it now. You are seeing the first slide in my Google Doc on the hangout. I'm, I'm focused yeah. on the slide share but people on the recording are seeing what they should see and hopefully people tuning in are as well. Okay. 
Vance, you see it? You see yep. it? Not? Okay, I, I will begin. Uh, uh, this is Learning Together, July, Sunday the 15, 2012. And my talk is called A Camel is Not a MOOC. It's not only just a translation, MOOC translated into Spanish, it's that it is different because it is a Latin American experiment. My name is Luis Ordoñez Vea, and I work and live in Caracas, Venezuela. I uh, was born very close from here, 100 kilometers. But again, why I say this in a Latin American experiment? Let me give a brief introduction to, uh, in the second slide, please go there in the slide share if you are connecting to it in, in your computer in another window. But uh, what is a MOOC uh, is basically at an open course, an open course where anybody can enter and anybody can do what he wants. Watch the classes, save the classes to, for a later time, or just even do the work. Sometimes the MOOC can lead to a degree, to a title, to a certificate, but you will have to do courses and perhaps you have to pay in order to do that. Let us remember that the original MOOCs developed by uh, um, I cannot do George this. Siemens, Dave and Cormier, um, and, and Stephen and Downs. Downs. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, actually, this the, this slide is showing one of the pictures of Cormier in two references I give in there. Uh, 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 mm, uh, Wikipedia, a Wikipedia presentation of the MOOCs and, uh, and the YouTube presentation by Cornier of what is a MOOC. Whoever wants to know more about this, all you have to do is to go to the Wikipedia or, or go to the presentation and you will learn a lot of MOOCs. But again, you generate a lot of connections with people, with blogs, with Wikipedia, with your own bodies, your friends. Now I am a friend of Vance and Jeff and, you know, they are part of my APA. I call APA is Personal Learning Environment. Ambiente Personal de Aprendizaje. Let me write it in the chat. Ambiente, that's environment, mm -hmm. yes. personal, mm -hmm. personal de aprendizaje okay. of learning. Okay, uh -huh. so in, in a MOOC, you, you uh, make your PLE grow and you can be learning the rest of your life. The course is over and you continue learning. That sounds very nice. But as, as uh, we can see in the next slide, actually, Stephen Downs developed a talk very good there is the, the, the link to his talk is there and in the slide you can take it from there and go to the presentation where he mentioned in a very casual way all the things he wrote in this uh, blackboard was in this case is a whiteboard the, about the difference between groups and networks and this, that's very important but because that is very related to culture actually you either have a culture for groups or you have a culture for networks. Let me try to talk about that in more detail uh, and I will need... Uh, okay, now I am on it. What is the difference or the basic characteristic of a group? First basic characteristic is that it is a unity country is a group of people that have nationality, that have the same language, have the same history, and behave as us. Us, the French, us, the German, us, the Korean, and the others. They are the others. Therefore, that unity requires and, and makes things to happen different because the group requires a coordination. A coordination means echelons, means somebody on top and somebody down. That's why countries uh, uh, vote or have somehow a president, a leader ahead, okay? Groups are closed. Groups need that their people bind together and look others as different and put walls for others to enter and walls for their own people to get out. Groups are distributive. 
Distributive means that somebody has and gives to the others. The Latin American culture, in my opinion, has a lot of group behavior because historically it was a very vertical organization. We didn't have, I remember, we, uh, the Latin American countries come from the tradition of the uh, European, Catholic European countries. In the 1800s, a very well-known French person visited America and wrote a classic book about how the, how the North Americans behave. People from the USA behave as citizens. And he, in the middle 1800s, said, we are different from them. And he was a French, very close to Spain, Spain how you see. And Spain, for 500 years, 1500, excuse me, 300 years, 1500 to 1800, had dominated Latin America. And we have all these kings and white people and the black people and the Indian people and all the intermixing. Therefore, our society is still very, behaves very much as a group. How a network, a culture of networks is develops. The first thing in a network is the diversity. Each one is different and they get together for one or two things that they might get together. At this moment, I am talking with somebody that is in Asia, somebody which is in the Arab world and me there in Latin America, and we are speaking in English and we, each one of us has a different background, but we are here together because we are interested in one or two things, in education, in MOOCs, or in teaching English language for that matter. That diversity naturally makes the people to have autonomy. What means autonomy? That each one is independent and we must cooperate. We must get some, in somehow an exchange where all win. We had this morning before this class, we were talking for about half an hour, cooperating in order to have a good class. Because each one of us in this network is interested. Here is not a boss. Here is nobody distributing things. But we are talking autonomically in an open society. Openness, because I am saying what I think, I am talking with my connections, people tonight, my or tomorrow, a month from now, can watch this presentation and say, this guy is right, I'm going to try to get in contact with him, or no, I am against what this person says. And as I am against what he says, I am going to, to say it, or I am not going to open his, his letters anymore. So, in a network society, in a network society, we need to build bridges. We cannot be closed. On contrary, we need to have easiness for getting together because from that, new societies will be emerging. Societies of people interested in the same things. And that's why we need connectivity. And that's why I think, at least, that one of the main objectives, one of the main ends of any education nowadays in the world must be to generate, must be oriented to generate connectivity among the people. In such a way that everyone can, through connectivity, network with whatever interests him. Mostly if you are an adult. Because an adult only learns those things that interest him. And connected, he might use the web to connect and create the networks that interest him specifically. This sounds very clear, and by the way, this talk is very well elaborated by Stephen Down, he's uh, uh, in his blog down there. Well, you can get to a photo, and from the photo you can go to the, to the blog presentation probably, okay? But let me, let me continue at this point in, in the Hangout. What is the reality in the world na na nowadays? Is all the world the same and is evolving in, a, in the same way? What I'm showing now in the next slide, which I hope you can see better uh, in the slideshare presentation. Hello, Daniel Basil, by the way. Say, let me say hello to somebody who entered. It's, it's a study hello. on the world Values Survey Foundation, and this is uh, their newest uh, map. Okay, I think this is 2010. In, in this 2005 map, they had not separated the Islamic world that you can see down at the bottom to the left from the African world that you can see more or less in the 
down, middle, down, bottom of the of the figure. I hope everybody can see the figure now. But let me show it very clear, very quickly. What they have done? They have do surveys, massive surveys in all these countries, and they have extracted from the survey characteristics and generated an equation that shows for each country the average and where it goes in this scale. From one side, it goes from um, uh, traditional values and uh, again, I will move <laughs> to my uh, talk here. From traditional values to rational values. Please look where is Japan in the middle top. Japan is up on top at the middle. It means that Japan is, by this study, the country where least value has tradition and more value has tradition, uh, uh, rational thinking. And you would say, no, that cannot be possible. The Japanese with their kimonos and their windows and their beautiful culture. Huh, careful. They, are, they take care of those things that they like if they don't need so, something different. But I will not enter into Japan. What I want to show you is Japan is there. Another different country, another very interesting country is Sweden. To the right, right, upper, upper right. According to these people, through the years, every country in the world is moving towards Sweden. Okay? Except the left corner. Islamic and African world is separating from Sweden. But I was saying that on the bottom is traditional, in the upper is rational, in the left is survival. Remember the Malo Pyramid. You all must know Malo Pyramid because uh, you are edu educators. Okay, so survival, uh, survival values to the left, self-expression values to the right. And where is Sweden? Self-expression, secular rational values. Oh, Americans are like that, of course, to say something. No. If Protestant Europe makes part of the world, but English-speaking world is much more traditional. And the Americans know it, by the way. I don't know whether the Australians consider themselves very uh, more traditional than uh, Protestant Europe. But the truth is that the World Values Study show that the English-speaking world, to be different from Protestant Europe, to be different from Catholic Europe, or from the Confucian or the Orthodox world, and are much less traditional than South Asia, Latin America, Africa, and the Islamic world. Of course, there are differences, for, for example, within Latin America. You can see whether, uh, you can see that Uruguay and Argentina, Brazil, are getting closer to Catholic Europe. Um, the Central American and Caribbean countries, Salvador, Puerto Rico, Colombia, Guatemala, Mexico, are much lower in that tradition. Well, uh, now let's uh, allow me, please, to uh, speculate, if you want, a letter on these results. To introduce new technologies in the classroom is against tradition. And in vertical society, where the boss has the last world, where my mother in, at home, my teacher at the school, or my boss at the job know what is true, know what is right, and has the uh, truth in their hands, they will get away from new things because they don't know it. So for a teacher or for a mother, Oh no, that computer, oh no, that's nice, that's like watching TV, I don't care too much about that. And that's what is learning the student, okay? So, in, in places where the tradition is very high, uh, Vance is showing something, but I want to show my view from my window. <laughs> I don't know if you can see there, but it's a beautiful <laughs> summer look here in, in the Caribbean. <laughs> this, is, this is a view oh, from I one of my windows. <laughs> okay, <laughs> let, me, let me continue. Let me continue. Uh, again, if I am in a traditional setting, to insert new technologies goes against the traditional value. And the professor, the teacher, must get distance from that and won't teach it. But he will say, no, they are native uh, digital people. 
they are in board digital but what the kids are doing is twittering or facebooking in their very close spheres family relations from the school they are not getting knowledge they are not getting information and according to the uh, connective knowledge theory all what you know, need is to get information and contextualize it but if you only get information from the top and you learn very early in life not other information because you can get into troubles with the top when you say hey but you i know something else you might get into troubles. That's a characteristic of the cultures down here in the middle low of that cultural map. And again, I don't say it's bad or it's good. We have been studying this. I got into the technologies and I think the technologies will help change those aspects of the cultures that we don't like. Let me tell you another history from Japan. There is this Sapporo University in Sapporo, Japan. The origin of Sapporo, Japan University was that in the 1800s, Japanese decided to have better chips. So they sent missions to search and, uh, and uh, uh, pay professors in naval engineering in the United States, in, in Europe, which were brought to Japan to learn to do chips. Western way, because those were better chips than their own. They didn't care about their kimonos. They kept their kimonos, but they started to build modern chips. So that's why I'm not afraid of cultures. Cultures are changing continually. Even the World Value Survey says that in every survey, they think that if they detect that the countries are moving, but getting together. So we have as teachers to know this because when you send a probe, a technological probe to these cultures, they are going to find different things. A MOOC is a MOOC in Canada and probably is a MOOC in the English speaking people, uh, countries, different MOOC than it is in Latin America. So when I try to copy the methods and to put it into my world, what did I find? is very well shown, I think, in the next slide. And the next slide is very well known, it's in the web, up and down, but let me remain it for you, uh, that's why it called it. Then let us insert ICTs into our society. And what happens is being shown in that slide. In order to be fair, all are going to have the same test. You all are going to have to climb that tree. And that is not fairness, because we have different animals. And what we are telling the people with the MOOCs is all are going to climb the MOOC tree to different animals. And then we are going to get surprised when we see that the attrition rate in some cones is very high. And we already know, I think we have developed much more to believe that is lack of intelligence. I think we know enough to know that is that the way you handle technology is very different. Let me give you just an example that I learned from my family. American culture, I think, is British culture, but I don't know. I have lived and my, from family, I know uh, North America. In Christmas, they send postcards, Christmas cards to everybody, hundreds of cards to every people they know in Christmas. That I never saw here in Venezuela, my country. And that was very nicely sold by email, by internet. One single car, a list, and you send hundreds of Christmas cards to your relatives, friends, people you met once in life. That never happened in my country because we never send one single car in Christmas. So that's a different use for methodology. And so I say, no, go out and branch and connect and develop the network. What network? When my mother might get mad at me for networking with the, no, the teacher can get mad at me because I said that I went to a Princeton course 
in Coursera and learned more sociology than the sociology you are teaching me, professor. You gave me a book, uh, 20, 30 years old, and the professor there gave me, came out this past year, and I'm reading it now. Therefore, we people that work globally and that pretend to develop MOOCs globally must be very careful with the kind of animal we have in front of us and the kind of tree we want people to climb, okay? Having said this as an introduction, let me round up to you. There are MOOCs, very fine instrument being uh, allowed by new technologies. We have cultures, cultures in the world tend to happen by religion, by countries, by ways of looking at the earth, and we must be careful on doing that. Now let me enter in the second part of my talk. The second part of my talk is just to describe to you what I have been doing so far. And my lessons learned, or learned lessons, and what I am planning to do now. And I am inviting every people who might be interested. I did the first experiment as an undergraduate course, Social Impact of Internet. Impacto social the internet. Very close languages, okay? And it was relatively good course. I had like 30 students that had to take the course and needed a grade. And they acted as a core group. And I would say like 70 other people took the course. Of those 70, something like 15 kind of did the, the exercises and attended and participated. I would say that half just watched the class and half connected, entered, and never came back. But have to end the course and have to do the exercises allowed me to give classes. Some of the classes were the presentations by students, dating through internet, library searching, through internet, politics through internet, music through internet. Each kid developed a, a, an assessment of what could be done. Or I remember the, the kid that did it uh, in music, a, a student of, engineer, of computer engineering, and see from the history of, of uh, music to how to write music on computer, how to make music in, in the computer. Very complete, beautiful, APA, personal learning environment for music. Whoever takes that can study music. That was one of the examples of uh, uh, over more than 20 examples that came out. Every student had to develop a single one. So I thought, here I have a MOOC. Let's continue. So I did a second experiment based in a doctoral level course, citizenship and democracy. Of course, being doctoral level, much less a student eight students, much less people enter it, much less people finish it. So mm, something is happening here. Let me do an experiment. An experiment, a course open to general public. There are no students, there is no core group. Nobody has to do it. And this third experiment I did was an entrepreneurship course. Very interesting because what I did was to take and a Stanford's entrepreneurship course, which I have been taking, finished last week, by the way. And from that course, I want to take my hat off to Professor Chuck Isley from Stanford. Very good course. I learned a lot in that course. But I learned the techniques, computer techniques that helped me to put the people to collaborate. As a matter of fact, I developed a, a work in that course with a professor in Italy, education teacher that brought the thing of how to educate masses and a, a, a professor from a, a, not professor an engineer from Argentina which has a company that sells to municipalities uh, courses for cooperativism with the teaching of cooperativism using the platform very nice Italy Argentina and Venezuela I took those instruments, I took those uh, tools and tried to give a course aimed to college students, but open, but open to anyone, and where no one had 
to do it. The result was very bad. Because people started to having problems in developing their teams. Remember, the first experiment, each student had to do his work. Second experiment, each student had to do his own work. It's a doctoral level course, and each doctoral candidate had to develop an area. But in this third experiment, it, you had to create a, a, a business with other participants. Or you could look participants out of the course and brought them to the course. Then you had to get together and create collaboration. You had to create a network of people getting interested in developing. Well, I have to say with regret that the course is finishing next week, not tomorrow, but the Monday after that is the last class. But by the time, there is not a single company created. There is not a single group that has hold. There are still people coming to watch the classes. And as a matter of fact, I am being interviewed on the radio next week to talk about the course, a very interesting course where a lot of information is being given. But the sense of creating a network, the end of uh, the, the criteria for uh, success in the MOOC has completely complete failed. Not a single group, nobody has done the work. So, going back to iterative research in social sciences, which will begin in September. But again, here I am not, not going to teach research to any scientist. What we uh, are going to be looking for in these four experiments is people that are doing research to learn to network to learn to collaborate with others. You don't imagine how is that in, in a different culture from, from yours, because, well, you both, I, I am talking to Jeff and Vance now, that are my, my co-holders uh, of this session, but you both are in other cultures, and you can look for different cultural values. I am in my culture understanding that collaborate here in science is very hard. People kind of close, and where you have a group, you have a boss, and kind of the German tradition in the university, where the senior professor had the school of younger professors doing work in the same area. That Now, it doesn't happen longer in Germany, but in South America it happens, where you have collaborative works, in research, you have a, a master who has younger people, and they have a line of research that can go for 20 years. But a professor in Argentina getting together with a professor in Salvador and trying to develop ideas and being able to say, listen, I don't understand. I don't know. Let's see how we manage to find out. That is very hard. By the way, I'm going kind of going out of focus. Perhaps it's my, my computer. I don't know. But the, the problem is not me, as long as you can watch these slides. So let me go back. Collaborative research in social science, first, is going to have a core of graduate students that must do the work. It's a subject. They have to get a grade. Therefore, the motivation comes very much from because authority order it. Okay? Remember, I'm talking here culturally wise. Secondly, the uh, the uh, success is going to be measured by the kind of network you create. So the idea is that if you don't create a good network, you don't get a good grade. So the incentives are going to be much stronger. And the tools are going to be coming from entrepreneurship, from, uh, by the way, so far, 18 people have registered to take the course. Of those 18, only six have filled up a, a letter question I do. And those are graduate students. Most of them are graduate students. And those, of those six that have filled up the questionnaire, none uses Hangouts. And f five out of six don't know Google+. Plus. Is that somebody is learning automatically. Let me tell trade I don't care to say here, and let's argue. But in my society, in my culture, in my circle of friends, nobody reads instructions, telephones, are intuitively. 
So everybody knows, you know, how to send measure, how to Twitter, but but they don't know how to get all of the everything that come out of the mobile because instructions are not followed. I remember when I was young, I had a laboratory, but I am a biochemist originally, and I had in the walls this is uh, this card that said, "When everything fails, read the instructions," because the creativity of people and the intuitivity of people make them to, you know, oh, more or less go and solve the basic problem. But to learn, to get information for knowledge from internet taught in our culture, for reasons I have been trying to explain. And that's the great uh, thing that we must solve. Try to enter into education schools, to teach the teachers how to use internet, to teach the teacher how to connect in order for them to give classes and to teach the teachers that they don't have to know everything, that they don't have to prove the students they are the one who knows most, but the ones who is going to help the students for together search for information and try to make that into knowledge. So this course in collaborative research that I am planning to, to do, I am trying to offer for this coming week, Oh, let me go to the next slide. Well, I wanted to just kind of round up my lessons learned from the three comments I have given so far. There is a language problem. Yeah, of course, language problem because the web moves in English. And if you don't know English, it is harder to get. It, mostly if you don't read the instructions. Go to the tutorial. Oh, too long, seven pages. Why don't you tell me quickly? And then I practice. So we have this language problem. We have connectivity problems, not only for lack of, of connections. And when I mean lack of connection, I mean that in many areas still there are no internet links, okay? But once you are connected, you have not been taught how to connect to other areas. People don't know how to use YouTube. People don't know how to use SlideShare. People don't know how to use Google. You won't imagine pro teachers, college teachers, being surprised that they can put more than one word in, in Google. You remember that the, uh, the, the search motors in some blocks accept only one word. So if you look for two words, it, it rejects it. Many people use Google with one word and when you tell them, no, no, just put the whole paragraph and see whether the student just copied from somewhere else. You can do that. Yes, you can. So we have problem of connectivity. We have problem not only in collaboration, but in participation. Because when you participate, you expose yourself. And if you do something wrong, people are going to know. People are going to know that you don't know. And you are a professor who is doing a doctoral degree, you must not, you must not care, <laughs> you must not worry, but that's the reality. People don't participate out of being scared. If they don't participate, much less collaborate, of course, it's something I have to do. And I think there's a lack of openness, uh, openness, that being of open, I'm sorry, I don't speak too good English, it's not my language, I do my best, but you know, if we will try. How many people in that mock and why did it work? Did networks not form? Well, again, if people don't participate, if people, uh, uh, Vance wants to talk. Yes, Vance, please. Uh, Vance, I believe you're muted. You might need to unmute yourself. Vance, I believe you need to unmute yourself. Okay. Am I unmuted now? Yes, nope. you are. Yes. Yes, you're unmuted. Okay. You are. I, I hear you, Max. Go ahead. All right. <laughs> I think there must have been a, uh, a sound stickler around here. Muted me. <laughs> who, who could that be? Which one of you did that? Okay. So anyway, yeah, I was just going, I was just saying that that question that I put in, how many people in that MOOC and why did networks not form? was uh, I put that in for the third experiment. Uh, in the last one you did, you said you had 18 people, which I guess technically 
people would quibble over whether that's a MOOC or not. But I've been running courses which are about the same number of people, and I call them minuscule open online courses. So I, I still call it a MOOC. But I mean, I understand where you can uh, put the precepts, you know, the, the the principles into a smaller course. But of course, a uh, MOOC with thousands of people has a better chance of forming networks. But so I was wondering, in the third one you described, uh, how many people were in that MOOC? Okay. And why networks? Uh, let, let me point out two things here, and now I, I hear you. I, I thought on that too, but I was surprised by Roberts uh, from Montana who wanted to do a private MOOC. You remember that I was surprised by that, and I, I had the same point of view. I, I had more chance of finding people in larger MOOCs. But Robert is doing a wonderful uh, work. I think at this moment, less than, it started with less than 50, and I think there are like 30 people active at this time. And he's very active. But of course, that has a core group of students that must pass the subject. So uh, again, uh, the, core, the coreness means something. In that third uh, camel I just started, I just started with close to 100 persons. Okay, because uh, it was first promoted for people not in university, but for artisans and crafters. And I wanted to help the cra hand crafters to develop entrepreneurship around cooperatives for uh, this cooperative movement, like the co uh, student cooperatives for dorms and things uh, that are in the world, to create cooperatives for many hand crafters, create their hand and export together because alone they cannot do it. So I have handcrafters, I have teachers, university teachers, I have people interested in entrepreneurship, but attrition rate very high. Groups, I was able to create five groups of four or five people that had expressed interest in working together to keep learning. People from Mexico, from Venezuela, from Costa Rica, five groups of three, four people. I am talking now about 20 from up to 100. And after two weeks, the groups didn't meet again, because the first time they met, Skype and things like that, they started to openness fell, collaboration fell, no participation, big problem. Of course, I can think of lack of diffusion, lack of promotion, because that same thing of closeness of a culture do you know the guy? No, I don't know. I know if you don't know it, I better, you know, you don't get with people know previously. And you don't have to know them personally, but somebody, some friend of yours must know them and say, yes, I know them. Go ahead. The guy is good. But if you find that in your circle, nobody knows the guy, hmm, you stay away because there are many crazy people around, you know, and you never know what craziness they are doing. So. Uh, yeah, I have the numbers. I, I uh, once I am planning to publish this. Remember, I'm an academ academician, and I come from the history of writing papers and so on. But what I am doing uh, uh, more and more is that I put all my production here in isuuu.com uh, slash lordonesv. But it's in Spanish, okay? So, uh, and I try to write in Spanish because I want people from my world to read me. I am, I am at my age, I'm not interested in becoming famous any longer. So I don't want to have in the best journal. I want to, other people to read it, okay? So again, I started with about 100, end up with about 25, still about 15 come to classes, but no one continue doing the network, the group. That's interesting. So. Uh, some of these things have happened. I showed it earlier. I, I did it. I gave about that first camel, well, the, that first MOOC in Spanish. Uh, in a, I gave a presentation of about an hour in a uh, web, web, uh, edu, edu web, educational web talk. I was invited and I gave a talk about an hour about that handle. Again, Many people learned there that MOOCs existed and the, the connected knowledge theory existed because it still has not reflected that very much. And what do I expect in my course now? I am going back to the uh, um, slide by Downs. Collaborative research in social science implies getting out of a culture of group to a culture of network. 
and people to learn that in a network you can do either the same protocol experiment in different communities or the same problem with different approaches in different communities and you're just being open to win and learning to collaborate and learning to use the settings on the blocks which you won't believe but we must teach how to participate in order to collaborate in order to generate networks and that's the end of a MOOC will I be able to do it I don't know but again I am trying to learn from these experiences is what I have been showing to you and now I am with this is my last slide open to any comments but let me round up the figure the figure if I round it up goes very fast I all I have to say is that in order to work the MOOCs idea the camel idea which is great for learning le great for adults learning and that's why it has spread so quickly in the world we must teach many things taking into consideration that the teaching is culturally dependent how people get the ideas how they understand has to do with their cultures and that implies different approaches to different cultures for and being adults for helping them do what interests them and that's why in the in the course we plan to teach the MOOC cognitive research in social sciences the idea is that each one brings the area they want to study and what we will do is to develop through the MOOC strategics and designing tools and teaching tools that people can use to go out in the web to look for partners partners for their research because something teaching me the entrepreneurship group you cannot create from nothing a company somebody you must have a leader that wants a company to be created and he will search for his team okay you have an idea for research look for us that are interested and create your own group I, I, I am very interested in this think binder I don't know if you have run across it but it's a new tool that um, I think might help people to create very easily much easier for example than a Yahoo group and the thing binder is very easy to get in and once you are in if somebody is connected you can uh, do something like a Skype talk or hang out with it and you can uh, hold uh, and so on I think that if I have 10 scientists 10 researchers doctoral candidates or university teachers that create a thing binder with at least five other scientists in the same general area and they start telling each other what what they are and how they could collaborate I will say my MOOC is a success uh, in this world I don't think that we can still think a uh, dream with what is happening for example the Princeton course in sociology I'm taking now has something like I don't know 30,000 the uh, transculturalism group in Stanford had uh, like 100,000 students 60,000 students I mean thousands no and it's not only because they don't have internet but because the search for information is not a help to solve problems in our culture I mean in uh, the search for information uh, and bind it we need the information that comes from the boss we need information that comes from that to whom we might respond and that's a cultural problem that we might start solving through education but I will finish now officially my talk remembering something that 200 years ago the teacher of Simon Bolivar the you know the, the independence hero in Venezuela said the teacher of him Simon Rodriguez, teacher of Simon Bolivar, said, We are creating republics, but we are still are lacking republicans. And the first we must make republicans is the teachers. Until we don't have teachers that are republicans, they will not be able to teach or to talk, I don't know how to say it, republicans in our societies. 200 years have gone by and we are still in 
big need of Republicans that will be able to use this information to search for it, to contextualize it, and to create their own life, not the life that they are being ordered. Any questions, fans? Any question, Jeff? Any question? Uh, go back to reality now. I have a question for for Vance. I mean, I I think this is a really interesting um, topic, and, and especially in this world where there's so much openness and collaboration. And I think a lot of the issues you mentioned of why they don't work. There's a universal component, but there's also the cultural variable. I'm curious, Vance. You know, as as Luis was talking. I thought about the webheads, which have a pretty strong Latin American component and kind of are mookish in many ways. Uh, have you experienced this kind of challenge in building this open community uh, and variables in cultural participation? Hmm, I, I don't really see them as cultural because I suppose with webheads they just don't... Um, <laughs> with webheads, they don't uh, seem to. Um, we interact. In, I, I think there are a couple of different threads in Luis's talk, and one of them is culture, which surely must be a, a factor. But another one, I think, is also this um, ephemeral um, nature of networking. You know, getting networks to work um, when you put a course together. So I, I do, for example, the multiliteracies course over and over, and sometimes it sort of falls flat, and other times it gets people, sometimes there's just one person in, in the group that, that uh, you know, becomes a networked person. Hang on, there's a cat walking on my keyboard in a minute. But I'll get rid of the cat. Okay. <laughs> okay, so um, I find that that's, that's the most intriguing aspect of what, Louise has been saying to me is, you know, what is it that causes a course that you might give, say, in a similar course in two different environments? And I mean, Louise has been experimenting with his course kind of like I experiment with mine, and that uh, even Stephen and, and George and uh, Dave have, have been experimenting with theirs. You know, they're sort of constantly reinventing it. They're, they're sort of at a higher level, but for for a course that has 18 to a hundred or two hundred people, um, you know, what what is it that makes these courses come together as a network? And for that matter, uh, talking about webheads, which you're asking, Jeff, is what what makes webheads come together as a network where a lot of other groups don't really form into that kind of uh, thing. So I I don't really see too many cultural differences, uh, or at least they don't seem, to, you know, when what we're trying to accomplish, they don't appear to me to be significant uh, versus the other kind of glue that holds uh, uh, networks together. So that's that's what I'm sort of more interested in. Um, let, me, let me say something. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, in thinking on web heads, I wanted to give you an idea, and I know this is going to be watched by webheads in Latin America and all over the world, but my impression is that you have an original cultural uh, uniqueness, which is the, the British Council training. Uh, most of the webheads come to know the webheads and are trained in British Council institutions. So the British Council acts as a teacher and the students that get English, to, that become English teachers to the British Council are learning techniques, are having practices, and happens with them what happens with Latin Americans that go to get PhDs to the north, to the United States, Latin Americans that go to PhD tend to approve their PhDs, and they get excellent grades and very great scientists. When they come back to their countries, they don't function too well because the managing or the management of the whole machinery is hard to do. They enter there in, in some work uh, that was organized. When the web heads go to the British Council and learn their new techniques and learn that they learn a technique there, that perhaps they are not capable individually to generate in their cultures. Am I right that web heads are mostly from British Council training, etc.? I, I don't know about mostly because there are 
a thousand or more webheads, but I, I do know what you're talking about. You're, you're thinking of a Latin American contingent and also a Turkish contingent that has uh, is, is is working with uh, Nick Peachy and um, uh, Graham Stanley and uh, people like that. In fact, I was even invited by Gary Mutteram, for example, to um, uh, to give a presentation in Morocco. So there are um, that that is a, an influence. And also, I've visited in Argentina some of the webheads there. Uh, in Argentina, in particular, I was very struck. But there's one thing that you mentioned. Uh, uh, then I noticed it in Argentina, and that is if you go out into the city and you go to coffee houses and uh, anywhere you go and eat, there's going to be Wi-Fi. And everybody has their mobile telephones and they ask the password for the Wi-Fi and everybody connects while they're... But, but take that into the, uh, into the education sector and it's just not there. And um, it, it happens also here in Arab countries, it's, it's similar. Um, in fact, I think a lot of us are probably functioning in milieu, which are really not connectivist at all. Um, uh, what I do here is, you know, my passion, and what I do at work is my job. Um, I would like to introduce people at work to my passion, and the way I try to do that is to by connecting with other teachers. And I think that's another thing you touched on was how uh, we can get teachers to uh, become connectivist and. They have to connect with each other. They have to uh, do what we're doing right now, and then you see how uh, these uh, tools that we're using bring your uh, students together. It's kind of interesting too. I've, I've just actually written. I'll put a link in in the text chat here, but I've just written uh, an article about what I did with my students last semester, which um, is a something I couldn't have done had I not been interacting for the past 10 years with uh, people in this kind of situation. And I've sort of landed it on the people I'm working with. Uh, I'm designing a course, actually, and they're, they're becoming quite concerned. When I, try to, I, I tried to teach them how to make link loops, what I call link loops. You set up a Google Doc, and you put a link there to another Google Doc, and you make the two links work together. I was so surprised that they couldn't do it. You know, they couldn't conceptualize it. and. Uh, I mean, I thought that that's pretty simple. I just wanted to sh to show them that they could do that in Google Docs. That could be interesting to know, uh, but they couldn't even conceptualize the two, you know, how to make the links work together. So, uh, I, I suppose here you have teachers. These are teachers, you know, who, um, the in order to teach the course that I'm designing, are going to have to understand the concept of wikis and putting their students' work online and linking to their students' work and. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm having a lot of success with my students because they're more malleable and they're they're interested in what I'm doing. I, uh, you know, I model things and then they they're oh, how did you do that? You know, and so they're they're kind of keen on that kind of thing. But the the teachers I'm working with, uh, they really need to get into uh, what we're doing now. You know, and you have to lead them there gradually. And and that gets back to I use the, in C maps very much. I, mm -hmm. I, I more and more I am using C maps. Conceptual uh -huh. map and and, uh -huh. and giving the link to CMAP building and or, uh, ordering for people to develop CMAPs. You don't imagine the lack of practice in managing complex thinking, mm -hmm. and the CMAPs helps on that. But but uh, the gravel, okay, the first work that comes out is bad work, and that has to do with how to create concepts, how to handle conceptual things. But I think Dan was writing something. Yeah, I, I'm oh, using yes. Oh, oh, yes, Dan. That's the problem. Yeah, sorry, go ahead. And please feel Dan free to unmute to yourself, Dan. <laughs> yeah, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. I think I've got my dryer yes. going on in the background, so that probably creates some noise. But uh, I, I really appreciate, uh, uh, Lewis, what you're saying. I, I, I've connected with the webheads over the last eight or nine years, uh, and it's a relationship building process. Uh, if I wasn't motivated to be here on a Sunday morning trying to learn how to use this, uh, then I wouldn't be getting any, any benefit out of it. And I think that uh, until we teach more people to become self-directed and self-motivated in spending time in these forums, trying to figure out how to use them, uh, we still got a long way to go before we get benefit out of them. 
So, Luis, what would your advice be to people who are trying to run some kind of global open learning experience, be it a MOOC or called something else? What advice would you have for, you know, integrating this kind of cultural sensitivity and, and making it more accessible for people who might not be uh, coming at it from a perspective of the people who are putting on the course? Very, uh, let me say that at this point in time, <laughs> but I, I will try in my next course, I think that first you need a core group of uh, students that must be motivated for even uh, other reasons. I, I, create, I, I think, I believe in the core group of students that must get a good grade because they will do the extra job that is needed. That I, I have seen mostly uh, in undergraduate students, okay? They took it as a course and they don't want to fail. So they interact among themselves to to learn because uh, we at least in here, I think we have a very much of Robin Hood mentality. You know, Robin Hood fools the powerful and the powerful here is a teacher. So we students are going to get together to win him. So the students get together and learn a lot in order to, to do what they have to do. First thing. Second thing, uh, I'm going more or less in what Vance mentioned, you need two or three students to be leaders of the group. So I am trying to, to generate two or three close allies that will kind of lead the discussion and to argument in order to drive others because they are in the Robin Hood side and not in the King's side. Okay, so okay, with him I can talk because he as I have to win this teacher who knows too much and he thinks that everybody knows as much as, as he does. And the, the third point I think is uh, uh, goes more or less in, uh, I think, uh, Daniel was mentioned is you have to create the 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 nexus the ne yeah you have to create your own network of other teachers I have been trying to do it in Latin America I started trying to do it in Venezuela uh, I, I have kept going into webheads uh, uh, even though I am not an English teacher because if we had four or five places where this is done and you could kind of uh, stimulate your students saying go there and see what they are doing what just Vance did he gave us a poster that uh, of something he's doing okay here am I teacher as him I am going to learn from him and I can ask him to help me tomorrow but our students don't see that and if I my students I send them to English pages but they don't read much and that's some, uh, something I didn't mention, but in our culture at least, we are very, very much talkative. We talk. We see. We don't read too much. So for us, a C-map is much better. You C-map, you imagine the things and you get your imagination. But read 15 pages? Mm -mm. That's too much work. And if it is in another language, even worse, of course. So again, a core group, two or three. Oh, we just lost Luis. Ah. <laughs> we're just about to get the the, the the secret answer to making it all work yes yeah, so oh what will it be we'll come back next week and find out <laughs> yeah well, that's an interesting discussion um, kind of enjoyed that yeah I, I think it's a really interesting question and I, I think there are differences uh, you know that are significant. I, I, I think there's a lot of common challenges as well. I mean, I, and I, th I think the question of how do you get this kind of open community or course working is, there's a lot of commonalities there, but, but just the, the cultural approach to, to learning, be it in an open learning environment or elsewhere, is, is also significant. Well, how, how would you answer that question with respect to world bridges? I mean, you sort of had the, you know, did you notice any cultural differences you know, when you're bringing these communities together? If I were to be asked that question by someone you were like just me, asked? I would say, <laughs> you know, I, I think it's a, maybe a combination of networks and groups. I, I mean, I, I do think not only culturally, but on a, a personality level, I think some people are more comfortable with having their lunch table that they're comfortable sitting at and not necessarily being 
focusing on the cafeteria, but just focusing on their own particular group as opposed to the whole Hello. network. Welcome back. Lewis. Yeah, suddenly, yeah, suddenly froze. So I, I, I re-entered. A moment, were you hearing me? Did you, what, you did. Yeah, I was, we, I was we just lost you in the hangout. I was just asking Jeff if he had noticed in his World Bridges community, because he's a, he's a great community builder too, uh, if he had noticed any cultural differences. And then he started he's answering the question, telling me about groups and networks. But, I, um, but, but you're tying the, network, the groups into, into uh, culture. Is that what you're doing? What, what, what I'm saying, I mean, I'm answering the question of, of how can you uh, optimize participation from different cultures and this kind of thing. And, and I see a possibility for, you know, it's not network or groups. I, I think you can have sort of a group component within a network. Uh, as far as the cultural differences that I've noticed, um, you know, my experience has been that the Westerners and Latin Americans are much more engaging. They're willing to talk to a stranger and have fun as opposed to uh, Asians tend to be much more reticent in mm. going, you know, and Luis mentioned about, you know, at least if I know someone and maybe that's true for everyone, but I think it's especially true for Asians where they're, they're just, you know, webheads don't have a lot of Asian participation compared mm. to uh, other cultural groups. Mm-hmm. True. Mm -hmm. And there are a bunch of people here and a bunch of people studying mm -hmm. English. Mm-hmm. Yeah, or, or people from, well, we have, a, there's, there's some Arab uh, people who participate. I'm thinking of Mubarak in uh, Morocco and, uh, well, anyway, so there, there, and, and uh, Ayat Twell and um, some other people from Egypt who've been participating with us. So, but, but in general, you don't get well, or maybe they're just not. Uh, maybe I don't know. Maybe as Louis said, uh, people from the British Council background tend to uh, sort of integrate better with the Western mindset, I suppose. And and also these people have, especially in Cairo, they've been to the uh, maybe the American University and uh, uh, sort of had the, that kind of influence in their education as well. Well, mm -hmm. it has been a pleasure. Thank you very much, friends. Okay. Well, nice to have you, and uh, we certainly appreciate your hanging out with us. And uh, I think I'm going on holiday in August, but I think Jeff is planning to kind of keep this going through the month. Is, we'll see. My, that, my Monday mornings are going to get even earlier, so we'll, we'll talk, and, and one way or another, people will keep learning together. Yeah. Uh, no obligation. Goodbye, Luis. Mm -hmm. Have a wonderful uh, Sunday. Yeah, go ahead, uh, Dan. Uh, before you guys go, can I ask a question? Are, are either one of you or do you know of people who are mapping the quantifying the, the numbers of people coming into groups and how those groups grow over a period of years? Like you've got a thousand members in uh, webheads. It didn't start that way 10 years ago. Uh, so it's grown consistently because of the things you guys do. Um, if we're uh, uh, organizing MOOCs or groups like this uh, chat and so forth, uh, uh, are people quantifying the growth of the participation so that over time uh, uh, we can begin to compare to see not only how many people were getting in and how many keep keep coming back and how that grows, but based on that we could begin to share uh, uh, success stories or strategies on how some people were able to grow their groups more than other people were. And, and unless uh, the organizers of these things are, are, are quantifying or, or mapping their growth, uh, we won't have uh, much of a comparative. That's a really good question, and I think it bumps up on the groups versus connectivity, connect uh, ver a group versus network issue. And that is that when, if you're thinking of a group, it's probably got a name, like Webheads, for example. But as we encounter more other groups and as we become more and more connectivists and that you know there are people who uh, it, it, they're, they're not necessarily webheads but they're connecting with us or you know what I mean is that that the group sort of dissipates it's kind of like uh, um, it will this the diff diffusive nature that was mentioned in Stevens um, uh, little sketchy uh, diagram there 
the 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 distributive nature. One one was distributive, and I'll have to look at the slide again. But let's see. Yes, one was uh, distributive versus connective. Okay, so I noticed the word distributed under connective in the network side. So we're getting a little bit of um, uh, what would you say a little bit of static from that word distributive, which is under the group, and the corresponding um, word for that is connective. But under connective is distributed. So you know, it's, it's in other words, what I'm saying is that that even in the in describing these groups and networks, um, you know, if you're trying to put a number on a group. Uh, you have to understand that it's going to diffuse into other networks and it's going to be really hard to count once it starts getting big and diffused and more distributed. What Lewis was talking about how it, yeah, Lewis was talking about how it took two or three uh, uh, organizers uh, to be able to attract people into the group and uh, uh, to create uh, social change uh, groups have to grow but they have to grow large over time and they have to retain uh, a, a core group of some of the same people uh, in order for relationships to grow and shared knowledge to grow and, and at some point people actually working together to make something happen. And there's a lot of intentionality in that, uh, that if it's not present and if we can't quantify whether or not it's happening, then there could be a lot of activity, but maybe all that activity isn't leading to anything. Yeah, well, thinking also not only of webheads, but of, say, World Bridges, which is another, uh, well, it's a network of communities. Uh, here again, it, it sort of goes out into Classroom 2.0, for example, and sort of uh, bumps up against the K-12 online community and webheads, of course, and, you know, all these, uh, these, these core groups that identify themselves with webheads or with... Um, uh, world bridges, or with the K to 12 community, let's say, you know, or and, and they're going to I, ISTE conferences, and uh, they're going to their set of conferences, and then there's another group that's kind of doing the the British Council thing, you know, they're they're quite connected in their world. So um, as far so as the, it sounds like the yeah, short ahead, answer yeah. to your question, Daniel, is no. <laughs> <laughs> or or let's try to figure it out. You know, <laughs> it's a very good question. Well, I read, Mm -hmm. the, one of the reasons I come into the webhead groups is because webheads are part of formal learning at uh, K-12 and college and, and beyond. And that means as we ask these questions, there could be an awful lot of researchers or looking for research projects who might want to begin to tag along and quantify and do network analysis showing uh, how what we're doing in the uh, last 10 years is building uh, connectivity and connections and connected learning that leads to problem solving in the next 20 years. But I, uh, uh, I know there were some people ahead, who sorry. formed a research group uh, as part of EDUMOOC last summer. Uh, and I don't know if that carried into Change 11 this year, but uh, if you, I know they were crunching some numbers and I believe they even published an article somewhere. But it's going to take a lot of people in many places uh, uh, doing this work. Uh, uh, going back to what Lewis said, you know, the motivation that uh, if, if you cast around the world, say, let's get together, uh, uh, you have to cast over and over and over uh, to bring people to a common meeting place. And, uh, uh, and then in that common meeting place, you got to build relationships and share information and uh, over time, that might lead to some common goals and some shared purposes. But that's a process that uh, it, it can be enhanced by what we're doing with the technology, but it takes uh, some intentional effort uh, to do it. And there ought to be some uh, people looking at the, how that's working and who's doing it better than other people and so forth. Yeah. Well, again, I. I have to go also. Thank you very much for everything. Uh, thank you for your remarks. I'm willing to collaborate whatever you happen to need. Bye bye. Thank okay. you very much. I think I'm going to sign Thanks. off as well. Thank you guys. I enjoyed it. I'm going to go for a jog. I'm all dressed. I've got my running shorts on, and it's just the heat is gone, so I'm off. And I'm going so to bed. Thanks a lot.
Thanks a lot. Yeah, really appreciate Look forward your to continuing coming together sometime. Learning together, July fifteenth, two thousand twelve, with Luis Luis Ordonez. Thank you very much, Luis and Jeff over here in the hangout, and me just tagging along. Bye bye. Bye. <laughs>